everyone, I am Ahmed Gad. I am a research assistant at University of Ottawa and working with Paperspace on different machine learning projects. If you don't know already, Paperspace is a cloud computing platform for GPU accelerated applications like machine learning. Today, I'll be showing you how to run TensorFlow Lite models on Raspberry Pi. In this video, we will use a Jupyter notebook for running the Python code on an instance of Paperspace Gradient that uses a free GPU. And this code also works on Raspberry Pi. Let's now move to the notebook where the first step is to install TensorFlow Lite. But the question, do we have to install the complete TensorFlow Lite library on Raspberry Pi? And the answer is no, because we only need the interpreter class from the TensorFlow Lite library. So we don't have to install the complete TensorFlow Lite library, but we want just to make sure that the interpreter class is available. And there is a library called TensorFlow Lite Runtime, which has the interpreter class. And so we want to install TensorFlow Lite, but just TensorFlow Lite Runtime. And let's now install this library. Because this library is not available in the Python package index, which is the default repository in which the pip installer looks for libraries, we have to specify the repository in which this library is available. And after this library is installed, we can import it and also import the interpreter class and print the version of the library and print the interpreter class to make sure everything is up and running. And after installing the TensorFlow Lite runtime library, we move to build the TensorFlow Lite model. And the first option is to build your own TensorFlow model and convert it into a TensorFlow Lite model. And the second option is to use one of the already existing TensorFlow Lite models in your project. If you would like to build your own TensorFlow Lite model from scratch, then you have to build this model using a library like Keras and save the model in other Keras or saved model format and use a TensorFlow Lite converter for converting the TensorFlow model into a TensorFlow Lite model and finally save the TensorFlow Lite model in a flat buffer format. In this project, we won't build our TensorFlow Lite model from scratch, but use one of the pre-built models. There are many TensorFlow Lite models that are available in this link, and the model we will use is the quantized version of MobileNet for image classification. And this model accepts input RGB images where the width and height are 224. The light version of this model, in addition to its class labels, are available in a compressed file that can be downloaded from this link. And we can use a dual-lib library for downloading this file. And the compressed file is extracted using the zip file library, which is extracted in a directory that has the same name as a compressed file. In this directory, there will be two files. The first one is a text file with the class label used by the model, and the second one is a TensorFlow Lite model. Let's now move to this directory and list the contents of the text file where you can see all the class labels, where the first class label is a background. Now we have the TensorFlow Lite model, in addition to the TensorFlow Lite runtime library which loads this model. And let's see how to make a prediction using this model. In the first step, we import all the required classes and libraries for this project. Next, we created an instance of the interpreter class to load the pre-trained MobileNet model. To make this interpreter work, we have to allocate memory for the input and output tensors by calling the allocate tensors method. The interpreter class has a method called getInputDetails, which returns a dictionary for each input tensor. Two of the important keys in the dictionary are index, which is used to retrieve this tensor for getting resetting data, and the second one is the shape of the input data for this tensor. Let's now inspect the output of the get input details method. At first, the output of this method is a list, and this list has a dictionary for each input tensor. And this list has only a single dictionary, which means there is only one input tensor in our example. And here are the details of this tensor. Using index 0, we can return only the dictionary out of the list, and the type is dictionary as expected. Using the shape key in this dictionary, we can return the shape of this tensor. And this shape means the model input tensor accepts a single image where the width and height are 224, and the image has three channels. Let's now read an input image, and I already uploaded an image called test to this Jupyter notebook, and as you can see, its size is different from the size expected by the model. 
and this why the image is size to make its width and height equal to 224. By preparing an image of the size expected by the input tensor, next we assign this image to the input tensor. For this task, we created a function that's called setInputTensor, which accepts the interpreter and the input image. In the first step, the index of this tensor is returned, which is 88. Using the tensor method, we can retrieve the current input for this tensor and show this input using the matplot library. And as you can see, the current input for this tensor some noise. We can assign the input image to the tensor and display the current input for the tensor which returns our image. After assigning the input image to the input tensor, we are ready to call re -invict the interpreter for making a prediction, and this is done using the classify image function, which accepts the interpreter and the image. By calling the invoke method of the interpreter class, the model makes a prediction and saves the scores in the output tensor. To get the details of the output tensor, we use the get output details method, which works similarly to the get input details method. Its output is a list of dictionaries for each output tensor, and we can return the output of the first tensor using the index 0. And here is the dictionary for this tensor. And as you can see, the index of this output tensor is 87. We can use this index to retrieve the output from this output tensor and return the class scores. Because the TensorFlow Lite model used in this project is a quantized version of the Unbinded model, it returned its scores as integers. In this example, the score of the best class is 174. To convert this class score to a probability, we dequantize this model in order to return the probability. And finally, the class index that has the highest probability is returned, which is 286. Based on the predicted class index, we can return its label. And this by reading the text file where the class labels are available, and then use this index to return the class label out of this file. For our image, the predicted class label is Egyptian cat with an accuracy of 67. And here is a complete code for our project. We started by importing the required libraries and the classes and defining two functions. The first function is called setInputTensor, which assigns an image to the input tensor. And the second function is called the classify image, which returns the class score of the assigned image to the input tensor. And next is to create an instance of the interpreter class and allocate its input and output tensors, return the details of the input tensor, and read an image and resize this image according to the size expected by the input tensor. And the classify image is called, which returns the ID or index of the predicted class, and finally, the index is used to return the predicted class label. That's it for this tutorial. Just to recap, we saw how to run a TensorFlow Lite model on Raspberry Pi. We started by installing the TensorFlow Lite on Time Library. This library has a class called Interpreter, which makes predictions based on a pre trained TensorFlow Lite model. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments or in Twitter at Hello Paper Space. Gradient offers a free GPU plan so you can run this project at no cost. I highly recommend checking that out. Thanks for watching. <music>